This is Ben Erdang. He's a law reporter and works for the Incorporated Council of Law Reporting for England and Wales, the ICLR. The ICLR produced the weekly law reports and the official law reports, appeal cases, Queen's Bench, Chancery and Family, as well as the specialist series such as the Industrial Cases Reports, the Business Law Reports and the Public and Third Sector Law Reports. I'm a barrister and my fellow law reporters are either barristers or solicitors. This is an important requirement as it means that our reports bear the stamp of legal authority and can be relied upon by judges and lawyers in court. Ben is at the cutting edge of the legal system, witnessing the setting of new precedents and the development of the common law at first hand. I'm standing outside the Royal Courts of Justice on the Strand. It houses the three main divisions of the High Court, the Chancery Division, the Queen's Bench Division and the Family Division, as well as the Civil and Criminal Divisions of the Court of Appeal. Today I'll be taking a note of proceedings in the case of the Queen on the application of Smith against the Secretary of State for Defence in the High Court. It's a judicial review case in which the claimant, the mother of a soldier killed in Iraq, is alleging that the government's refusal to disclose certain documents at the inquest into her son's death was unlawful. The case that Ben is covering involves issues under the Human Rights Act and there's likely to be media interest. It may even be on the six o'clock news. But that's not why I'm here. For me, it's potentially reportable because it's likely to decide a point of law on which there's no previous authority. In other words, it'll set a precedent. Whilst Ben and his colleagues may not be the only reporters attending these courts, they are the only ones who sit through hearings to take a note of legal argument. That's because the leading series, the official law reports, are the only series to contain a report of the argument. The ICLR is the only organisation which has dedicated reporters covering the Employment Appeal Tribunal and other appeal tribunals and the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg. Of course, it's one thing to cover the courts. It's quite another to decide which of those cases need to be reported. The primary skill of law reporters is in identifying those cases that readers need to know about and then reporting them as accurately and as authoritatively as possible. Out of the 5,000 or so decisions of the senior courts each year, about 350 cases are selected to be published in the weekly law reports. Of these, about 150 will subsequently be published in the monthly parts of the official law reports. Those are the cases which, as well as being of practical value to the profession, are thought to reflect the long-term development of the law. The decision as to whether a case is reportable is one of the ways in which we use our legal training and skill. The law reporters' legal skills are vital in the way that they write their headnotes. To encapsulate in a few hundred words the circumstances of a case and the propositions of law which it decides, without either wasting words or confusing the reader, is a skill which is not easily learnt. It is partly academic, partly journalistic and partly practical. A good headnote enables a reader to ascertain quickly what the case is about and how it may be of relevance. It is just one of the many features by which the ICLR's reports add value to the judgment. Others include the catchwords, sometimes called keywords, which categorize the subject matter of the case according to a hierarchy of index headings and the lists of cases referred to in the judgments and cited in argument. Between them, the catchwords and headnote help practitioners assimilate the ratio of the judgment at a glance. These are all things you can't get from a raw transcript. But if a case is important, and if it's definitely reportable, people need to know about it as soon as judgment is given. That's why the ICLR publishes overnight summary reports known as the WLR Daily Cases, which are available online on its website at lawreports.co.uk. In fact, they are the only such service which is free, and it's easy to set up email alerts or RSS feeds to keep bang up to date with the most important recent decisions. ICLR reporters also contribute to the law reports published daily in The Times. There is a time lag before we can provide the added value of a full text law report. I know that practitioners find this delay frustrating and it is something we're working hard to address, but there are reasons for the delay. First, it is necessary to wait for the court to approve an authorised transcript of the judgment. The transcript forms the basis of the report, but there's a lot that needs to be added. 
Ben's job as the reporter includes writing the headnote and catchwords and checking all the references and quotations in the judgment. He also compiles lists of cases, not just those referred to in the judgment, but also the cases cited by counsel in both written and oral argument, together with all their standard references. If the case is appearing in the official law report series, he will later add a summary of the argument. Once Ben has completed everything in the report, it is double-checked by the editorial staff, who proofread the cases. Proofs are also sent to the judges for them to check and approve the final version of their judgments. Finally, the edited reports are sent to the typesetters, who provide a further set of proofs based on the layout of the printed page. Once these have been approved by the series editor, the reports are then printed by ICLR's printers in Chippenham. Quality takes time and perfection even longer. But thanks to technological developments, our reporting times have improved considerably in recent years and the process is getting more efficient all the time. The Incorporated Council's law reports are also available electronically, either in CD-ROM format or online. Some series are available directly from the ICLR website. Others can be accessed via the websites of third-party providers to whom the ICLR has licensed its products. These electronic versions are fully searchable and printable and offer practitioners a really flexible and accurate research tool. In a system such as ours, which depends so heavily on the doctrine of precedent, law reporting is not just a work of scholarship, but makes a major contribution to the administration of justice. We're part of a tradition that stretches back hundreds of years. And while the way that we write and deliver our reports has changed in recent years, the standards of quality and accuracy that we bring to the job remain the same. Personally, I find it really satisfying to know that in years to come, my reports will be read by students, consulted by practitioners and referred to by judges.